Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, the divine Son of God, who became man in order to serve mankind by giving your life as a ransom for all people. We thank you for so caring for us that you called us to faith and blessed us with your word and sacraments. Forgive us when we become indifferent to hearing the gospel, weak in our prayerful trust in you, and desiring the things of this world above you. Give us opportunities to testify about your love and salvation, so that many other people may trust in your work of salvation. We pray this in your blessed name, O Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us rise for the text. <laughs> Grace to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for this morning is written in the 23rd chapter of Matthew, beginning at the 34th verse, and reads as follows in Jesus' name. Therefore, I indeed send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Bechariah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Assuredly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her, how often I would want to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate, for I say to you, you shall see me no more until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is your word, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us through your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. <coughs> your fellow redeemed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Today is a minor festival. The White Pyramids are meant for the festival of the Annunciation. But there's also another festival as well, and that is St. Patrick. St. Patrick was a young man who had been born in England. He was captured by Irish pirates at the age of 16 and brought to Ireland as a slave. For the next six years, he tended sheep and and did other things that were required of him. After six years, he escaped, returned to England, and then to France, where he studied to be a, a priest. And he felt that the Lord wanted him to go back to the people who had captured him and made him a slave. And so he did. He cared about these people, and from then on, he proclaimed the message of the gospel to the Irish people, and many of them were brought to faith. In fact, the whole island was Christianized by the time he died. Here is an example of someone who had been mistreated and then come back to care about the people that mistreated him. Our text for today speaks about a better person, that is, Jesus himself, who was mistreated, and yet he cares for the people. That is our theme for today. Jesus cares for the people who rejected him. Let us, on the basis of our text, consider a generation that would not hear God's word. And Jesus desires to have mercy on such a generation. St. John wrote about Jesus. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. Most of the religious leaders had rejected Jesus as the Messiah. Some people listened for a while and followed him, but then for various reasons they went away. Only a remnant of people in Jesus' day believed that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God, and that they were listening to his word. During the week of Holy Week, Jesus taught in the temple on Tuesday of that week. Some people listened, but various groups of skeptics came to Jesus to attack him and try and trip him up so that they could accuse him of false doctrine. Some of the questions were, is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? If a woman marries seven brothers according to the law, who will she be wife to when in heaven? 
And, Master, which is the great commandment? And then when Jesus asked them a question, if David calls the Messiah his Lord, how is he David's son? Those challenging Jesus simply refuse to answer lest they be understood as false prophets. Jesus then simply speaks and speaks sharply to these religious leaders in our text. The Pharisees and scribes, the Sadducees and chief priests. He said, woe to you, you are like whitewashed tombs, outwardly righteous but inwardly hypocrites. Again he said, woe to you who say that they have not killed the prophets, serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? For Jesus pointed out that they would treat the prophets and wise men and scribes that he would send in the same way that their fathers treated the prophets that God sent. Some of them you will kill and crucify, some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. These enemies would kill the prophets and apostles just as the others had killed the prophets whom God had sent. And the book of Acts describes some of the ways in which these things, this prophecy of Jesus came true. King Herod had the apostle James beheaded and Peter put in prison for a time. The deacon Stephen was stoned to death by the members of the Sanhedrin. And the apostle Paul was stoned almost to death many times, whipped to death near, near death five times, was followed to city to city, from city to city by Judaizers who insisted on keeping Jewish laws and in order to enter heaven. And tradition states that all of the apostles except St. John were martyred for their faith, for preaching the truth about Jesus as the Messiah and the Savior. Jesus then warned these enemies of the truth what would happen to them from God's judgment when he said, on you may come all of the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Bechariah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. What a fearsome judgment. Cain had murdered his brother Abel because Abel believed in the promise of the Messiah and trusted in that promise. Zechariah was a prophet who condemned the once good king, Josiah, and Josiah commanded that he be stoned in the courtyard of the temple. Now, God did not punish all of the murders of the Old Testament in the way they, uh, with great severity as he could have. He patiently waited for a time when God sent his son. Through John the Baptist and Jesus, God called on the people to repent <coughs> of their sins and to believe on Jesus as the Messiah, the Savior of the world. That Messiah came to give the light of truth about God and the promised eternal life that God would bring through the Messiah. When Jesus then was crucified, God brought upon the people all of the punishments that were <coughs> stored up through all of the history of that generation. And even then, God waited 40 years before he brought this destruction upon Jerusalem. And during those 40 years, the apostles and many others proclaimed the message of salvation to the people. And many of the people, including many priests, believed on Jesus as the Messiah. Now, God's judgment on Jerusalem was more than just. For in rejecting Jesus and putting him to death, they had rejected God's grace of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus told his enemies, he rejects me, rejects and does not receive my word, has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. And Jesus' words are truth about sin, about God's mercy and grace, about Jesus' death for sin, and about the promise of eternal life. And whoever rejects these words of Jesus and the truth that Jesus spoke will suffer and be judged by those words. What was Jesus' purpose in speaking such harsh words to these enemies of the truth? Was he gloating over their future uh, uh, judgment? <clears throat> or was he trying to pierce their false pride in order to help them to repent and lead them to believe on the Messiah? The answer is found in our text, where Jesus said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, 
the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Jesus wanted to gather all of the citizens of Jerusalem to himself, that they would believe on him as the Messiah, and then go out and proclaim that to the world. He preached to the people about how God so loved the world. He did miracles in Jerusalem to show that he was the Son of God. He was the Messiah whom God had promised. He took pity on the blind and the lame, and he healed them and gave them faith. But the citizens of Jerusalem were not willing to believe or listen. And so who gets the blame for their unbelief? Did God not do enough to convince the people? Did Jesus not do enough miracles to help them to believe? Or did God simply elect some to eternal judgment in hell? God forbid. But that's the answer that the theologian Calvin, who lived 500 years ago, he reasoned that God's election is the cause for people being saved and also the cause for those who are ending up in hell. But then, Jesus' words in our text would be false. How I desire to gather you together. A little while later, a man named Arminius reasoned that, yes, Jesus died for all people, but that everyone has a spark of goodness, a spiritual spark in them, where they can decide for Christ. And so those who end up in heaven are those who decided to accept Jesus and believe on him, and those in hell are those who decided to reject him. The answers of Calvin and Arminius both are wrong, woefully wrong, sinfully wrong, because they contradict what scripture says. Yes, we're dealing with a paradox. The paradox is this, everyone enters to hell, it's their own fault. Everyone who gets to heaven, it's God's doing, totally. And so to answer this question, let us consider Jesus' words in our text about a generation whom Jesus cares about and saves. So why does, the question is, why do some believe and others do not? The Bible teaches that salvation and faith is totally due to the power, work, and glory of, and grace of God. God's law shows that the human race deserves eternal death in hell and that we cannot save ourselves from sin. The Bible says, just as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin, and so death passed upon all people for that all have sinned. And since all have sinned, all are under God's punishment and justice. Our good works cannot erase the punishment that we deserve. Wisdom, God's wisdom says, he who sins against me wrongs his own soul and all those who hate me love death. Scripture teaches that the cause of unbelief rests in each person. God does not elect anyone to go to hell, nor does he call with the gospel less to those who end up in hell. On the other hand, Scripture ascribes the cause of faith to God himself and God alone. For God desires that all men be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth, the Bible says. And this passage echoes what Jesus said in our, in our text. How often I wanted to gather your children together and to help them to believe. And so Jesus sent out his apostles with these instructions that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all generations and to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And St. Luke informs us and with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. And so the Holy Spirit brought many of the Jews to faith in Jesus during through the word of the apostles that were preached to them. And they proclaimed that Jesus was able to rescue all people from sin and death and from hell, because he was holy, he was almighty, he was all-knowing, he was all-loving. And so the Bible declares, Christ also suffered once for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might put us, he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. And so through Jesus rising from the dead,
God has proclaimed the forgiveness of all sins for all people. Jesus has accomplished that by his death and resurrection. And God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light of truth. St. Paul says, so then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That's hearing by the word of the gospel, or hearing by the word of the gospel in baptism. God brings faith to those, and to you and I. He has called us by the gospel, and therefore he has brought us to faith. It is God's work. And so, by God's grace, the Holy Spirit has brought you and I to believe on Jesus as the Messiah and Savior. By giving us faith, God has justified us, that has declared us not guilty of our sins, the many sins that we have committed. And he who justifies us will also glorify us, that is, taking us to his home in heaven. So, why then will so many people not enter into heaven? After all, God desires that all people be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And Jesus died for everybody. Jesus gives us the answer in our text. How often I would have gathered your children together, but you were not willing. The people had rejected God's grace. They had rejected the salvation that Jesus came to give them. And so the Bible teaches that everyone enters into hell is responsible for their own judgment. St. Paul shows why the people rejected him. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God is what Jesus earned for us on the cross and by his holy life. That righteousness is given to us in baptism. It unites us with, baptism unites us with Jesus' death. And Isaiah says, my soul shall be joyful in the Lord God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. Our text today presents us a great mystery about God's loving will. We all deserve God's judgment and punishment. God desires that all people know him and be saved. God has called us by the gospel, enlightened us with his gifts, sanctified and kept us in the one true faith. He washed us from sin in the waters of baptism, and he gives us Christ's body and blood to assure us that our sins are forgiven. So today we discussed the difference between those who rejected him and those who were brought to faith by God. Before he died, Jesus tempted to show how serious that rejection was, as we heard in our gospel as well today. Let us remember Jesus as our Savior. Let us thank God that he has brought us to faith and kept us in that faith. Let us pray that the gospel continue among us so that we may know the truth and the truth set us free from sin and the truth deliver us to eternal life in heaven, which is God's desire for us. He has called us to do that. May God bless us as we continue to trust in him and believe on Jesus as our Savior. Amen. Let us rise for the blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. We say the